Hi, this is Dr. David Brown, and this podcast is part of a class I'm teaching at Pellissippi State Community College called Introduction to Information Technology. This week we're going to be doing a computer build, and the assignment is that you will spec out a computer. You don't actually have to build this computer, but you do have to lay out all of the parts that you would use in a build if you're actually going to build the computer. In the blog post, I also want you to describe how you would put those parts together in general terms. If you haven't done this before, it's not really that hard. I think a lot of people uh, are intimidated by the process, but if you have done this before, you can use your um, previous build as the basis for your blog post. But I do want you to go in and actually link all of the parts to the site that you could purchase those at. So I can click on the links and check and make sure the parts really fit together. Um, I've provided a lot of resources out here on D2L to help you with this process and I'd kind of just like to go through those and show you what those are. First thing is these hardware video links. If you click on this link, uh, you should see a page here that the first two of these in particular should be helpful to you if you haven't done this process before. There are other videos on YouTube and on the web about building a computer if these don't work for you just Google that, you should come up with planning. But uh, these two right here uh, should be enough to get you through the, the basic process. Some of the other resources here, I have two blog posts where I built a computer recently. Uh, a year ago, when we were going through this process in a, in a previous CSIT 1110 class, I actually built a computer with the class. And so the first post describes the parts that I chose and why I chose those. And the second one is then the process of me building it and some of the things I encountered during the build. So those two links right there should be helpful uh, just to basically to get you going also. Uh, here are a couple of links that will help you to find parts. Newegg.com is a favorite of mine and one of the reasons I like that site is because you can go and look at customer reviews for the parts. Sometimes, if I'm not sure if parts might work well together, you can go into the customer reviews and see if other people have pieced those parts together and what their experience was. This other site is, is another great resource for, for getting computer parts cheaply because you can compare parts at different places. You can also look at the previous blog posts for other classes. We've been doing this exercise for a couple of years now. If you click on this, you'll see other student blog posts and you can look and see what those students did and the troubles they had and how they overcame those. What I would like for to make sure of though is that you do your own work. Don't copy any of these posts. If you haven't done this process before, like I said, it's intimidating, but I think after you've actually done it, it will give you a confidence. So if you haven't done it before, please make sure to do your own work. Also, if you have done it before, do your own work. There's a couple of notes that I have down here that I wanted to make sure that you knew about. Some of the main things that you have to worry about about if parts fit together. The motherboard and CPUs, there's a socket type that describes whether those CPUs will fit together. So if you look on the motherboard, it will tell you the supported CPUs and the socket type and you have to match that type and the socket uh, to be able to plug the CPU into that socket. That's, that's one of those. The other one is motherboards and cases there's a form factor a letter designation that those will have that will match like AT or ATX that means the size of it so whether it will fit in the case or not this other one that I've listed here RAM and motherboards you have to match again the type and the speed that's the motherboard requires with chips of RAM so like DDR3 is one type of of RAM you would have to match that type along with the speed that the motherboard said it could support. So that's the way you, you match some of the major components. Look through the videos, look over the materials I have here, and if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, I hope you have fun with this assignment, and um, I'll see you again soon.